So let's assume that we have a negative aggregate demand shock, which we can call it a demand-driven recession, such as stock market crash. So let's draw our aggregate demand, short-run aggregate supply, long-run aggregate supply. On our x-axis, we have our output. On our y-axis, we have the inflation or price index. This is our vertical long-run aggregate supply curve. This is our upward short-run aggregate supply curve. And this is our downward aggregate demand curve. All of them intersect at the same point. Consequently, here we have an equilibrium. And this is point A. This will give us our potential output or full employment output or natural rate of output which means at this rate we have our Nairu or natural rate of unemployment and this will give us our inflation one. Therefore, if we have a negative aggregate demand shock, therefore aggregate demand will shift to the left. So now we have a new point of intersection between aggregate demand two and short run aggregate supply, which is point B. This would result in a lower inflation rate and lower output level. Therefore, I know that here our Unemployment is bigger than our unemployment is bigger than natural rate of unemployment, which means we have a recessionary gap because we produce less, people work less, therefore we have a recession. But look here, we don't have an equilibrium. Why? Because the three curves, the long run aggregate supply curve, short run aggregate supply curve, and aggregate demand don't intersect at the same point. Therefore, here we have a recessionary gap. In the long run, or to reach equilibrium, we must have a potential output. Therefore, let's assume that we have no government intervention. The government is not going to use fiscal policy and central bank is not going to use monetary policy to stabilize the economy. So what will happen in the long run? So in the long run, we know that we have a lower consumption because of stock market crash. This means that our aggregate demand will be lower. Therefore, it will shift to the left. Consequently, our prices will go down. Our output will go down. Our unemployment will go up. So I know that here. Because our unemployment is bigger than natural rate of unemployment or NIRO, this means that wages will drop. So cost of production will be lower, therefore producers have a motive to produce more. Then for short-run aggregate supply curve will shift to the right. Therefore, I will check here at the point of intersection between the long-run aggregate supply curve and aggregate demand 2, which is this point, point C. So I know that short-run aggregate supply will shift to the right to intersect with this point C. And here we reach our new equilibrium which means we reach our full employment output at natural rate of unemployment and we reach our price level or inflation rate 3, which is lower inflation and we reach our full employment output or potential output. We said this is what will happen in the long run. So this is what will happen in the long run. Therefore, in reality, this short run aggregate supply curve will shift many times till we reach this final equilibrium and that's why we discovered that sometimes we put here little dashes which means we show them that this shifts many times because this happens over the long run it will take many years till we reach this equilibrium so in the second graph let's assume that here we have a negative demand shock aggregate demand shifted to the left and here we have a recessionary gap which means we produce less than our output and our unemployment is bigger than natural rate of unemployment Therefore, what will happen if we're going to use an expansionary fiscal policy? Expansionary fiscal policy it means that higher government spending or lower taxes. So if we're going to increase government spending or lower taxes, what will happen to the aggregate demand? Aggregate demand will increase, which means aggregate demand will shift to the right to its original one. Therefore, I know that aggregate demand will shift back to its original point, which is point A. Therefore, we return back to our full employment output, our potential output, and our original inflation level, which is by one. What if we still have the same scenario and then the central bank decided to use an expansionary monetary policy? Expansionary monetary policy it means that higher money supply or lower interest. Lower interest would result in higher investment. If investment increases, we know that our aggregate demand formula is C plus I plus G plus NX. So if I increases, aggregate demand will increase. So I know that aggregate demand will shift to the right, which means instead of having a recessionary gap, we return back to our original equilibrium point, point A, where we have full employment output and our inflation level one.